Hey there, and welcome back to Star 77 Productions. My name is Trent, and on this channel we just do product reviews and we provide links to those products so that you may purchase them and maybe help fund our channel. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to go over my favorite camera setup for some of the YouTube channels that I have. And this setup includes an external microphone. It includes the Nikon D3300. And then one of my favorite type of tripod stands that has the uh, ball valve uh, swivel. So first, the most expensive part of this setup is going to be the Nikon D3300. And everybody knows that uh, DSLR cameras are some of the best cameras you can do as far as video and photography. It kind of helps bridge the gaps and meet those two worlds where you can have great photography but you can also um, do high quality videos, video shoots um, as well. And you can also track moving targets um, for sports, for just regular videos. And then you can also zoom in to high quality uh, photos of flowers and up close photography as well. So that's why the Nikon is such a great a camera, all-around camera, and that is why DS, the DSLR family of um, camera types is one of the most uh, versatile and best used for video and photography that you can find. So I currently have the D3300 from Nikon, and it's one of their older models. I think they go all the way up to the 7200 uh, right now. Uh, if you have that kind of money and you're really, you know, into photography or making videos. But I find this uh, lower end model, the D3300, which has been around for quite some time, it is uh, definitely a standard and one of the um, entry level kind of must have DSLR cameras on the market. There, there are tons of videos on these cameras, so I probably won't go uh, too in-depth to them, but this is my favorite setup here. I, ha I do quite a bunch of videos. I have a bunch of YouTube channels. Um, I do extreme sports, uh, quite a bit of stuff, and this is my favorite setup, so I just wanted to go down the, the rundown on this and provide some Amazon links uh, to these products as well. And when I bought my uh, D3300, I bought it with a package that came with uh, some different stuff, like it came with a uh, bigger millimeter lens, it came with a miniature tripod, it came with the uh, extra battery, and this external um, power source. So I'll provide the link to that package as well, because it's one of the best packages I could find for the D3300. Um, so you'll be able to kind of get everything you need to start. So just kind of a rundown of the D33. Like I said, it does have an external power source on it. Um, so it's just this power cord that goes up and it plugs right into where you would normally put a battery. Because I find for photography, the battery life is just fine. But for videos, the battery life is really not that good. And it's really best to just buy one of these uh, power cords that plug into the battery outlet. Uh, and you can just, you know, film video all day long and not have to worry about it. Um, so then you turn it on. You don't have to worry about battery life. You have a nice screen. Over here, you know, I think it's about three inches, so you can see what's going on, no problem. I usually put it in live mode, and that just gives you a picture of what the camera sees, and then it will show you, you know, what you're currently filming in. It's 1080, it's at 30 frames per second, and when you're filming at 30 frames per second, you can get about 30 minutes of video. 
So if you have longer videos you're gonna be making, I might not recommend this camera because once you get past, you know, once you get up into the high minutes, then the camera gets a little bit hot and that's why it'll only let you do 30 minutes or so. I think on the newer models you can do quite a bit more filming, but on the D3300 it limits you to about 30 minutes of video. And of course you can bump that up to 60 frames per minute depending on what type of uh, video you're doing, but I just leave it at 30. And then it kind of uh, tells you the miscellaneous information like how, what your microphone level set at, the, the battery level, um, what mode you're shooting in, the ISO number, uh, and um, if you're doing autofocus or standard focus, and then what picture or video frame you have it set in. So it's a nice, there's a lot of nice little features here and it just quickly gives you a summary of everything. Now obviously I'm not going to go into the different components, the menus, and everything you can do with this camera because there's so many features on here. I mean that would take forever. I just, like I said, like it because it does great photography and does great uh, high quality video for me. And it just seems to be very user friendly as opposed to filming on my GoPro, filming on my Sony camcorder, or as opposed to filming on my iPhone. I just always come back to this one because it's just, it has such a wide uh, area of viewing since you can change out all of these um, lenses here. It's just much easier to zoom in, zoom out. It's got an external light. Um, the um, focus is really easy to use. Uh, it does have continuous autofocus, but I don't use that because you can kind of hear it autofocusing itself in the video. So I just, I just do manual focus. Plus, you know, it saves power as well when you just do manual focus. And the um, pack that, uh, or the startup kit and package that it comes with that I bought um, has two other um, lenses that you can choose one, one for much wider, like maybe sports type stuff, and then a much narrower one for in tune focus on great photography. Plus it came with a DSLR uh, getting to know your video DVD, which was just like an hour uh, DVD, and it really teaches you how to use these cameras. So I definitely want to recommend this. It's one of my favorite setups. And then of course a must have with, with any of your filming, you know, outdoors, indoor, is a very good tripod. I've went through maybe three or four different tripods and I always come back to this one. I now have three of them in my setup. And it is the Zomi, Z-O-M-E-I uh, tripod. It has a lot of cool features because you can go up and down with this guy. You can go up and down with the legs. It, it, it has a ball, ball hinge here and that's how when you undo this you can go anywhere with that ball. You, any tripod you get you want to make sure you have the ball hinge because that gives you the most versatility as far as where you want to point the camera and you want to make sure you have a nice swivel. I mean they all come with swivels but definitely get the one with the ball and then this one also has a little level level here too like a bu air bubble level so that you know that you're going to be straight and filming you know a straight picture. Um, so that's about it. I will have a link to the tripod on that. And then of course for DSLR cameras, you almost always need to purchase a separate external microphone. The, uh, the mic that comes on board with these, you know, you can just see it right here. It's really only four, four or five little dots and it does not pick up very good quality auto uh, whatsoever. So I go with the Tactstar. I'll put a link to that. It's one of the cheaper external. It's just real. It's called a shotgun mic, uh, and it's one of the cheaper external ones on there that you can get. I mean, you could go with a little bit more high quality one, like the Rode microphones. Those external microphones, their shotgun line, are really good. You know, and those are anywhere from sixty to one hundred fifty bucks. I'm not exactly sure. 
But uh, this one is a little bit cheaper than that. I like it. It's really easy. It's just got three settings on it. It's powered by a AA battery. You got the on-off switch. If you want to, if your sounds are going to be higher than 10 decibels, you can move that up. And then it also has soft and flat and bass boom on it. And you just attach it. All of the DSLR cameras you're going to find are going to have an attachment for an external microphone because they're almost a must have. So you just attach it there and then plug it into the 3.5 auxiliary dock. So this, this package right here, or this setup I should say, comes with these three main components and it's just my favorite, you know, setup. I, I bring this around everywhere and it just makes things easy. And if you don't have an outlet to plug in, then yes, you are going to have to use the uh, internal battery that it comes with. Um, but usually you can film, you know, for a half day, maybe a full day, depending on what you're going to do. And then you can always switch in and out lenses depending on what you're going to do there as well. So I'll have the links to all these uh, setups, all the packages that you can get with your D3300 from Nikon. And I'll even uh, include some of the newer models of the Nikon just in case you're, you know, really hardcore into it. And you want to step up to, you know, the 5000, the 7000 and even the 7200. So thanks again for watching, follow these links, and I will see you guys soon.